Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Happy Monday to you. Happy August as well. Hope this finds you well. I'm Adam. This is Connecting with Adam. We're uh, live at the CBD Lounge. Appreciate the fellas having us here once again. Love Come you. On. Oh, yeah, we love you too. Come on down. Uh, it's free. Um, we've got some couches, it's low lit, it's really comfortable. We've got free CBD gummies or cigarettes to oh. give away. Alright, I love that, I did not know that. Free CBD gummies, free C uh, CBD dudes. CBD dudes, uh, uh, filtered dudes. Filtered dudes, right on, right on. I love those actually, They, I find they really calm my nerves and help with any kind of headache or indigestion for myself personally. So, um, you know, it, it's different for everybody. Um, if you're curious, even a little bit, come on down and grab yourself a free one. So Non-psychoactive. Non That's so true. Yep. 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 No psychoactive effects whatsoever. Yep. CBD. Really no side effects at all. So yeah. um, just good effects. So come on down, hear some music, hear some poetry. We'd love to connect with you. Uh, so this first song is called Back Again, which Jamie Brodius over here wrote. Um, for a gig we do also called Daptus and Storytime on Thursdays um, with, the, with the child. Indeed, and it is G-rated, family-oriented, and uh, educational. It certainly is. It certainly is. I highly recommend checking it out. Um, and that's more online. This is the in-person one. So again, I'm Adam. Thanks for having us here, fellas. You're welcome. Um, chat You're with you. them about some CBDs. Um, who doesn't want something to kind of take the edge off in life? recommend it for everyone and anyone. So yes, this is back again. Uh, it's written on ukulele, but we're going to do it on the guitar. share button right there to share all to your friends. Shares these cares. Um, so yeah, if you do see this show at any time, please share it. It's a great way to um, support us and support these fellows here. And it's free and easy. Um, this next song is not one that I wrote. It was called Murder in the City. I picked this one because it's just a little different than how I rock. If I were murdered in the city, I'll go revenge in my name. A person dead from such is plenty. Don't get locked away When I leave your arms The things that I will think of Will need to get over along
I'm also the tech guy. I wonder which brother is better. Which one our parents love the most. I'm sure to get him lots of trouble. I seem to let the other go. A tear fell from my father's eye. Wonder what my dad would say. He said, I love you and I'm proud of you both in so many different ways. If I get murdered in the city. attention to the list Make sure my sister knows I loved her Make sure my mother knows the same Always remember there was nothing worth sharing Like the love that let us share our name Always remember there was nothing worth sharing like the love that let us share our name. Thank you so much, thank you so much. I take my hat off to you. Yes. <laughs> off as well. Ah, thanks so much, thanks so much. Again, this is Connecting with Adam. I am your co-host, Adam. We've got Jamie in the wings here, the bat wings over there. Uh, kind of how the set is, um, I kind of started off uh, with Jamie, and then I kind of do my own thing, and then Jamie's going to swing in. I'll get a little break. Uh, you'll get to have a taste of Jamie, and believe me, it is quite delightful. <laughs> um, I'm not kidding. Um, so yeah, thanks again to these fellas for opening their arms and their hearts and their store for us and allowing us to be here. It's such a blessing. Um, so come on down, get some free things. Who doesn't want a free thing? And I know you right there, you at home, want something to soothe you, to calm you. The CBD, I highly recommend it. If you don't know it, if you're questioning it, they're offering free things here. In fact, I'm going to take them up on that as well. Alright, so maybe you've been sitting around thinking like I'd like to try CBD, but I don't know how it'll affect me. Will it work for my anxiety? Will it work for my joint pain? Will it work for my depression? Will no. it work for my appetite issues? Is There's it real? So Is it snake oil? And um, so free is an excellent right. price point to start trying things. Yes, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, don't take my word for it. Consume it yourself and let you be the judge. This next one is called Here. Here, here. It's a original by myself. And again, if you want to check out Connecting with Adam, we do it every Wednesday, although we're going to skip this Wednesday. I've got a little, little uh, procedure going on. But we'll come back with flying colors the following hump day. Thanks for taking the time out of your day, your evening, to share with us, connect with us.
changes resist when I fall. Wasted, waiting after thoughts. Where do I go from here? Bravely shedding my fear. Yesterday's tomorrow who's here Stay with me, please stay Sitting on family near Trusting fading tears oh, Where will I go from here? Bravely shedding my fears Yesterday It's a variety show in a variety world. This next one's another cover tune, Crazy Mary. I'm a big uh, Pearl Jam buff, um, and so when I was buying CDs and back in the, in the day of CDs, um, I'd get all of their stuff, so there were B-sides. This is actually like a C-side, I suppose, because he, somebody else wrote this that he did. So this is Crazy Mary. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I know I do. That, that's, that's why I'm doing it. Because I enjoy it. She lived on a curve in the road In the old tar paper shack On the south side of the town On a side of the tracks. Sometimes away in the town we'd say, Mama, can we stop it in your eye? Sometimes we did hit, but her hands flew from her side. Wow, now we Road, past 
the Parsons place The old blue car we used to raise A little country store with a sign tag to the side Said no L-O-I-T-E-R-I-N-G Crack mercy backed outside her window sill. Dreamed I was flying on oh, high old hills over the tree. I looked down into the house of Mary. Bare bones on oh, no. the newspaper cover wall. Share, but not to be confused with. Um, it's just a nice, free, easy way. There's a couple other ways. Um, come on down here if you're close. Um, we've got the door open actually here, so you could literally walk down by the sidewalk, stand outside, um, and see it for a moment. Come on in, check out the area. What's up, brother? How are you, my man? The door heavy as well. And um, he's probably just trying to make sure I'm safe. Yes, we've got some free <laughs> CBD uh, dubs, um, filtered dubs, and um, some free CBD gummy, is, uh, but singular, but singular. Not uh, Again, I am Adam. This is Proteus here. We are connecting with Adam. Um, yeah, I appreciate you being here. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Live and in person, first time, right? Yep. Yeah, right. Yeah, by the way. Right on, right on. Yeah, yeah. Recognize you. Yeah, we do. Right, right okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll hug right after this here. Okay. Mm -hmm. This next one is Cheers, written by Yours Truly. Oh. 
to you and I see the truth You live your life as you go in shadows You come apart and you go black Some kind of night into your
And then like when you exhale, the whole room smells so good. So I mean, there's options. And whether you dab or not, you could also bowl top it. So that's true. Don't forget to stay high. Graded. Last song, okay. I fear we're getting close to the end of my set, so I believe we'll be doing a cover called Fear. That's but, but don't leave after that, because we have more goodies. It's so true, it's so true. Stick around for more. But seriously, come on down, it could be easier uh, to come on down. Um, it's at 550 North Jefferson Street in Loveland, Colorado, the land of love. Um, come on down, get yourself some treats, hear some music, lounge. Tis the spot. What else are you doing on Monday, right? So yeah, this next one is one of my um, favorite bands, something I definitely look up to as far as the vocalist goes. Um, Justin from Blue October. I uh, hope it connects with you. Um, and whether it does or not, uh, stick around for more tunes and more connections. Let the damage consume me. 
show by Jamie and I, so all the lights and the setting and all of the things you get. Um, we also take tips. we got a tip jar here, and then we got a virtual tip jar there, too, and if you do leave a tip, know that it goes to all the production of it, the instruments, the lighting. The backdrop, actually, Jamie sewed by hand. I don't know if you can see that. It's freaking giant. They've been sewing it by hand for the past few nights as we watch the Olympics. Have you been watching the Olympics? I've been watching the Olympics. I've been watching the Olympics. Um, little little drop there, but yes, yeah, so all of this stuff, it takes a lot of work, but we also just really love it. We're really grateful to be performing together, so thanks for being such a big part of it. Stick around, we got Jamie next, and then we'll come back and we'll be doing it together, right here on the stage, together, take a plunge. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, for those of you who play along at home, you, uh, you might be a little bit familiar with something we call love grants. Because they're awesome and we do a lot of them. And so this is the love grant segment of the show. And uh, since we're live and in person, there's this cool little party trick that I do. Where at the very beginning, I do an interview with some lucky person in the audience. Today it's Nate. Nate was the winner today. And so Nate picked his sister, Chandra. Yes. Sandra, he loves you. He picks you. And uh, I do an on-the-spot love grams for free. So if you ever want a free love gram, just be here at the beginning of the show, and you have a chance of winning. So this one, I, I haven't titled yet, but it will be titled shortly. I haven't worded. That's what really matters. This is for Chandra. I lost you for a long time, just absent from each other's lives. I didn't know what I mi that I missed you so much. All these years, we were out of touch. I know your life's been hard as hell. Because you're so strong, no one can tell. Sometimes stubborn means survival. Independent without rival. Your spirit brought us together again. So I can be your brother and friend. Aww. Woo! Aww. Damn, you're good. <laughs> yeah. And if, if you would like to be the recipient, just be here at the beginning of the show. All right, so the rest of the love grams tonight, we are celebrating children because I like them. Um, even though they're they're not really permitted in here because it's a 21 and over place because of CBD rules. Um, children are awesome and a lot of us have them. So here we go. Uh, first, I'm going to read um, a love gram, kind of a lengthy one, that I did for my kiddo because I was trying to understand their perspective. We were having uh, some issues. They didn't stay in bed at night. I couldn't walk out of the room with them being without them being right behind me and tripping me, so we were working on it. And I had a conversation with them, and this is the love gram that fell out. It's called Alone. Hi, my name is Ro, and I hate to be alone. Even though my mom or dad are always here at home, sometimes I hear them say that I am underfoot when there isn't room because I stand closer than I should. Mommy says that I'm growing. As I get bigger, we need more space, but I like it best when my head is nuzzled right against their face. Sometimes I trip Daddy when he tries to turn around because I follow him everywhere, but I'm closer to the ground. I know that I have lots of things that Mom and Dad let me do, but there's an ache that starts in me whenever they leave the room. And so when Mom asks me to read or write or draw or build or play, I soon become quite bored with myself and abandon the place I should stay. And I love to read and write and draw and paint and all of the things that Mommy arranges for me to do while they are adulting. 
But it's not that I don't want to do them. The fact is I do very much, but doing them alone is less fun than in a bunch. I have a small attention span, and soon my mind will drift, and before I realize it, I'm up from where I sit. And then my feet take me to where I find my dad, or right next to my mom, or antagonizing the cat. And I have the hardest time staying in my bed because I creep down the hall and crawl in theirs instead. Mommy says that they need sleep, and Daddy says, you're fine. But I still wake them up, whether it's dark or light. My parents gave me loads of tools to help me concentrate and stay on tasks that are fun and educate. They taught me to speak up to myself with words that soothe to help me calm down and pacify my mood. Mom made me a lamp so I won't be afraid of monsters in the dark. I can light the way. And I could pet the cat who is cuddly and soft, but instead I choose to run with him up and down the halls. We stomp and wake the house up, and I'm not alone again, but Mom's mood is far worse than if they'd stayed in bed. Every day they coach me and try to problem solve, but they are the axis on which my world revolves. Sometimes I forget to use the tools they taught, and soon find I've been naughty, not doing what I ought. And I want to do what's right, but I hate to be alone. I don't want to have to be okay with being on my own. When I use the tools, they work and help me to calm down, but I don't want to be calm. I want mom and dad around. Everything takes practice. Each day is a chance to try to implement the strategies I've learned about what is right. Dad says that alone time could be really cool, and I'm the one who limits what I get to do. That I could have some hobbies if I'd stay on task, but the beginning of the fun is doing what I'm asked. I don't know what hobbies are, but I bet they'd be more fun if they were shared between us three instead of only one. I'm trying not to feel that when I find myself alone, but it's hard to stay by myself with my favorite people at home. They got a lot better after I wrote them the love gram, by the way. It actually solved a lot because we came to a mutual understanding where we work with each other. Um, this next one I also wrote about the kid in reflection of um, sort of them adjusting into the pandemic. Because it caused a lot of things to be different, and uh, it was a reflection on what the world was because of it. So it's called COVID, you know. Once upon a time, when I was smaller than I am now, I didn't see my mom as much because work made mom go out. And once upon a time, not that very long ago, I had less time with daddy too, and he would be at home. And once upon a time, back before things changed, I saw my babysitter almost every day. But then, all of a sudden, Everything I knew became very different, but the love in my family grew. Mom had days off every day, and Daddy stays home too, and we play games and laugh and sing and gaze up at the moon. Mommy taught me how to read and count in my ABCs, and Daddy taught me to write songs and play the ukulele. In the morning, I get snuggles, and at night, we snuggle more. I'm learning how to cook and be responsible with chores. We used to go to the grocery store together every week, but scientists said we were safer at home from COVID-19. So now it's me and daddy time while mom runs errands alone and I can't touch mom until they shower after they've come home. Dad used to take me to the bikes. If I was good, he'd let me ride around the toy aisles of the store with him right by my side. But we found a tricycle that needed a little love sitting near the dumpster, so we quarantined it and fixed it up. Instead of chicken nuggets that we get on our way home, we make our own from scratch and I get to shake the bag around. And now we have a kitty who likes to cuddle too and dad says we sound like elephants as we run from room to room. My sibling is essential so they couldn't stay at home, so they moved out to keep us safe, but we have video dates on the phone. I miss being able to hug them, but sometimes we still get to play if we make sure to keep our masks on or stay at least six feet away. And we still visit my grandparents, but we have to stay in the yard. I can dig in the dirt and water the plants, but not hugging them is hard. Loads of things are better now in my life than ever before, but there are some people I love who I don't get to see anymore. Mom says that life's always changing, what we do about it is up to us. That we control our attitudes, whether we celebrate or fuss. Dad's always happy to listen and help understand how I feel, and explains to me complicated things so I can grow and heal. And so, after that, um, about a year after that, a lot of things have changed, and uh, I did COVID Kiddo Part 2 to kind of bring an update for the kid, because they were struggling with new things, and weren't struggling with the old things. <sighs> Everyone's vaccinated but me, because I'm only five years old, you see. So 
one by one, the people I love joined the Double Vaccinated Club, but there's so much about it that's been really cool, and there's still some things that I don't get to do. I don't play with other children my age because we all struggle to keep masks on our face. I have not seen my cousins in more than a year as they breathe over there and I breathe over here. I try to be patient as the waiting continues, but I want to play with them in the same venue. If we had our shots, then we could play sports, we could play games and read books of all sorts, we could tell stories or try making art or laugh till our bellies ache every time we fart. I wish that they were here to play in our pool so we could spend the day splashing and acting the pool, whether we bake cookies, watch movies, or wrestle, or mix pretend potions with a mortar and pestle. There's so many things that we could share that make the vaccine way too hard to bear. We still go on field trips to really cool places, but it'd be nice to go without a mask on my face. Mom and Dad don't need their masks anymore because they already did their civic tour, but they still wear them so I won't forget or feel so alone when I can't do my bit. It would be better if we could all do our part, but many without masks refuse to wear them from the start. And how am I to know beyond those I trust who should be in a mask but refuse to do what they must? So I still stay at home when someone goes to the store. I wish I could check out the world like I used to before. We used to go to this place that we called the Discovery Museum with all kinds of things to see and explore before COVID boxed me in. I feel like my life's been spent waiting. A year's pretty long when you're five. My pre-COVID memories are cloudy as pandemic changed all of our lives. I know that things are changing. We're safer than we were before. I get to hug my grandparents now. I hadn't since I was four. My sibling comes over for dinner because they did their part, and I snuggle and play with Lane and Alyssa, who are super funny and smart. I'm grateful my world is more open than it was for over a year, but the suspense seems so endless, and the end is nowhere near. Mom promises they'll sign me up as soon as it's allowed for children to be vaccinated, but I have to stay masked for now. And they've actually been really good about it. Thank you. Um, but that's the that's the thing about love grams is they help us heal, they help us understand each other. And I find when I write about the kid, they feel hurt. And when they feel hurt, they don't fight me as much. Imagine that. So uh, I also in love grams can do coloring book love grams and children's book love grams. All of these have been done in children's books. I'm still working on the coloring book versions. So um, if there's something that your kid's struggling with, hit me up. Let's get it fixed. This next piece is called Grandchildren, and I kind of want to show off, um, if you can see it, can't really see it from there. Um, but that, yeah, you can go show the camera real quick. Um, and that is sort of how love grams come out when you get the final version. You get a decorative background with the words over it you can print out. <coughs> real, real quick, Jamie made that. Right oh there. yeah, so in there you can see a, a, a little fountain with cement. that uh, looks very much like a child's hoodie because it was made from a child's hoodie and it's a, a pretty decent replica of one that my um, mother-in-law gave to my kiddo and we used it so that it could go back to her. I, uh, I do a lot of work with cement. Um, if you're interested, let me know because I'm working on some really cool blenders right now that I'm totally stoked about. So this piece is called Grandchildren. A magic come alive again, a new generation spreads its wings to fill our hearts with songs to sing and spear wonder and joy on everything. Curiosity mixed with limited judgment, they are the little ones that question all the ways we think about a world we miss by blinking. Watching them gain understanding, whether sweet or quite demanding, is a magic all its own and the greatest that I've known. here at the end. Um, my pages are backwards, this will be fun. This piece is called Sunshine. Springtime fun leads to outdoor adventure. Finally, we get a break in the weather. The snow has melted, the mud has dried, and now my parents say I can go outside. I love to dig in the dirt and pretend that I'm planting trees and flowers with friends or ride my trike around and around, filling the air with its rattling sound. I spin my pinwheel on the breeze and sniff pretty flowers even if they make me sneeze. <gasps> Choo! I love to get my hands dirty and explore the world all around me. A stick becomes the oar of a boat 
as I pretend all kinds of things float. I imagine insects living little bug lives and try to not need anything that would send me back inside. The daylight lasts longer every single day, so later and later outside I stay. Daddy takes me walking around our neighborhood and lets me go almost wherever I want if I promise to be good. I wish it were hotter so I could play in the pool or run through the sprinklers, sprinklers after a morning of homeschool. I sometimes miss, and sometimes I miss the snow and all my winter fun that has gone away now that spring has begun. But mostly I'm just happy with the sun's rays on my face, whether playing hide and seek or setting up a race. A world of wonder awaits me with endless games to be playing until it's time to go back in until the sun comes out again. Alright. Um, this last piece is called Summer. Summertime is in full swing and I get to go outside and spread my wings. There's so much to inspect and explore than I ever knew was possible before. Sometimes the hot sun makes me feel like I'm melting. The heat waves, they say, are unrelenting. But most days I get to play in my pool. It's just big enough to keep my whole body cool. And yesterday, we found a frog in the yard. We found him three times, so it wasn't that hard. I've seen all kinds of bugs, from bees to beetles. My least favorite of these is the mosquito. Oh, there's this one bug that's almost too small to see. I named them Greeny because they are, in fact, green. There are so many games on learning how to play. I try not to cheat, but it's easier that way. Now I play Connect Four, Umo, and Checkers. I try to be a good sport, not a fun wrecker. With mom as my teacher, school's always in session. Every day is filled with lessons, and sometimes I do have to sit and do work, but I also cuddle up with mom as they read from our chapter book. And I help out in the kitchen making yummy foods. Mommy says it's science, but I think it tastes good. Mostly school in summer is fine, and if I get all the work done, we'll play in the yard, which means the pool and sometimes we visit my grandparents too. Now I have a tree that belongs to only me, and the enchantment of its shade, I do all kinds of things. It's like another world where I make all the rules, and I keep all my knickknacks and trinkets and jewels. Summer's full of wonder, and I hope it lasts forever. I hope that it goes on and on, just with cooler weather. Me too. Woo! And Thank you. Thank you so much, Proteus. I love that. So talented. So talented. All right. Thanks for sticking around. <coughs> Thanks for being here, Joseph. Welcome. Fellas. Thank you, Zephyr, as well. Come here, Bubba. It's okay. Yeah, if, uh, if you desperately need to pet a dog, there happens to be a dog here who loves pets. And so, say, say you can't get your own dog, can't have one, you could come pet Zephyr. I just had a CBD gummy, and it was quite yummy. Buoyant in my mouth, and quite flavorful. And also, again, for me, I don't know if you've ever performed live before, there's some nerves, for sure. Oh, the nerve. Um, Although I love it and I'm uh, grateful for it, there are some nerves for it. So I find CBD to kind of bring you back to yourself, uh, calm your nerves, and kind of allow you to be your best self. Oh, yeah, hey, we also got dudes uh, put up there. Mm. Okay. Like Just want to show us too. Right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this next song is called Taste. Um, and it's one of my absolute favorites. Adam wrote it, and he is sweet enough to let me duet it with him, um, which is super touching for me. Aww. It certainly is touching. So I just gotta get this strap on. That's what they call it. This is a strap on, and it's also a harmonica, but they call it the harps, not to be confused with a, a harp. A little harp on it. I, I will say, too, if you want to come down tonight, my uh, second segment is comedic in nature, so it won't all be bad puns. Uh, and it, but it's fun, nonetheless. All right. 
just some things. I did not do a sound check with that, but that was it. Okay.
We've got some free dibs and some free um, CBD gummies. The dibs are, of course, CBD as well, again, non-psychoactive. For me personally, it helps with nerves, um, headache, and um, nausea as it comes up. So we all have our ailments. Speaking of ailments, we'll be working on that tomorrow and the next day, right? I've got a big little thing coming up tomorrow and the next day, and so we'll probably won't have um, connecting with Adam on oh, hey. but we'll be having it the days of final. It looks like we got somebody who just tuned in. I can't actually a couple few people. A couple few people. Um, so how many is that? I don't know. It's a couple few. Um, so we got a couple few people. Oh, looks like somebody just said something. That looks like it might be Joshua. That's so it. normally when I do the show, I've got the uh, the phone up close and personal so I can reach out and touch someone. Here I'm just fingering you from afar. So uh, this next one is a uh, love gram that we wrote um, for lovers across the ocean. Um, so I don't know if you guys are tuning into it right now, um, but. Uh, we wrote this as a love gram. You too can order a love gram from us. Okay. We've got the special deals, deals, deals uh, here on the uh, front of the music stands, complimentary music stands. And if, if you can't see those, you could just shoot us an email at orderyourlovegrams at gmail.com. That's orderyourlovegrams at gmail.com. And I will get you set up with prices and what your options are. I'll walk you through it, hold your hand. No troubles at all. Also, you get $30 off your first visit with us, as well as if you mention uh, connecting with Adam, Sharesies, Caresies discount, you get an additional 50% off on top of that. Yep. So it's like basically free. You do um, have to promise to share it on your social media. Oh, though. that is yep. true. That yep. is yep. true. Yep. 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 Sharesies, Caresies. Yep. Yep. Which yep. actually makes some of the smaller uh, items completely free of charge. And basically, like, if you love someone or care about someone and you want to show them a, a unique way to express your love, um, we would like to help you with that with a love gram. So without further ado, you get a small taste of one right here. This is Forever Home of My Heart, written by Jamie, and I did the chords for it. That's kind of how we do it. So collaborate with us. We'd love to connect with you.
Again, I am Adam. This is Proteus here for connecting with Adam. Come on down to 550 North Jefferson in mm -hmm. Loveland, the land of love. Get yourself some CBD. Check out some tunes with me. We love you guys. Appreciate you taking the time to connect with us. Without further ado, I give you wands on guitar. Good luck. Thank you so much.
to see who can fit the most plugs in the show. Plug, plug, plunge. It's the, uh, the plug challenge. Uh, indeed. It's funny, I wrote this song a year or two ago, and um, I, I, would, I called it I Want You, and then I was like, oh, cool, it sounds really good. And then somebody said, oh, like the Beatles song, and don't hate me. But I was like, oh, I didn't know they had a song called I Want You. So I've actually changed it to want. And so therefore that is what it is. Um, this next song, um, we like to dwell in the depths of things. However, this song is called Shadow. Say, uh, I your bought bucket some accessories. And you need a new bucket. Mm -hmm. Come on down. Say you 
Knee pieces for your neck. Oh. They have so many. Come on in. It's, it's free. Really Grab cool. yourself some CBD. Uh, yeah, actually, that is true. Thank you for mentioning the accessory. They've got some wonderful. Hey there, how are you? Hi, Come welcome. On in for Come some in. Uh, free tunes here, bud. Perfect. Yeah, we've got CBD lounge. Have a seat. They've got some uh, free uh, CBD gummy if you're still on Climb My Man. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, we're connecting with Adam. Thanks for being here. All right. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, so this next one is uh, Love Gram that we wrote. Um, together, we're really excited to share it with you. It's called Rule Number One. I uh, hope you connect with it. Let us know that we do. Let us know if you do. I mean, I know that I do. It. So let me know if you do. <laughs>
It's nice to have a, a like that. What's up, brother? Wow. Yeah, enjoy the music. Okay. Actually, the next one. Yeah. Cool. CBD over there. Yeah, we have some CBD. And uh, that is the end of our set together. Oh, we don't have a break. Yep. Oh, okay. We're well, at right. 7.30, and it's time for me to do... You want to do the stuff one? Yep. Okay. Yep. And we've got a little bit of an audience here. And we've got a place. Okay. All right, this one's fun because it's a cappella, so feel free to clap along with this. And uh, sing up along with uh, any parts oh, yeah, of it sure. that you know. It's probably yes. Scotsman. I think it's a big, it was originally a Brian Bowers tune. But it's been done by lots of people. It's a lot of fun. Here you go. Her name's Rhea. Okay. Zephyr, come here. Well, Scotsman caught him filled with the bar wine even fair. One could tell by how he walked that he took for that his share. He fumbled around until he could no longer to his feet. Tumble up into the grass to sleep beside the street. Ring ding diddy i o, ring ding diddy i o. He stumbled off into the grass to sleep beside the street. About the time two young and lovely girls just stop and play. One says to the other with a twinkle in her eye, See, sleeping stocks, men so strong and handsome built. I wonder if it's true what they don't wear beneath their children. Ring ding diddy i o, ring ding diddy i o. I wonder if it's true what they don't wear beneath their feet. They crept up from that sleeping Scotsman quiet as could be. Lifted up the stilts about an inch so they could see. And there, behold, for them the view beneath this Scottish skirt was nothing more than God had graced him with upon his earth. Ring ding dilly addio, ring ding dilly addio, was nothing more than God had graced him with upon his earth. They marveled for a moment, then one said, We must be gone. Let's leave a prison for a friend before we move along. As a kid, they left the blue sticks driven in a bowl. Around the bunny star, the scouts kept the lift and show. Ring ding dilly i o, ring ding dilly i o. Around the bunny star, scouts kept the lift and show. The Scotsman woke to meet his toe and stumbled towards the tree. Behind the bush, he lifts his clothes and walks at what he sees. And in a startled voice, he says to what's before his eyes, oh, God, I don't know where you've been, but I see you one for surprise. Oh, ring ding dilly i oh, ring ding dilly i oh, God, I don't know where you've been, but I see you one for surprise. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Brian Bowers wrote one of my favorite tunes, Zen Gospel Singing. Oh, right on. I was not aware. I was like, I think it might be the only Brian Bowers song that I know. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love that you knew it and you yeah. connected with it. Yeah. Hey, um, thanks again for tuning in, folks. Uh, I am Adam. This is Proteus here. We are connecting with Adam. We'll be here every Monday here, 6 to 8. Come on by at the down low. We're also live online as well. We also do something <laughs> called Connecting with Adam every hope day on Wednesdays, uh, live online on Facebook. If you'd like to connect with us further, you could also uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's nice and easy and free. Um, we appreciate you being here. We've also got some free CBD here from the gentleman here. I'm going to take a little break, but uh, come on back. We're so grateful to have you here. We we'll hope you have a wonderful week. So uh, we're, we're taking things a little differently this week. Um, I think last week I did poetry, but this week we're switching over to some of my comedy, which is by far the most vulnerable thing I do. Yeah. One minute for me. Um, and so I pulled out some of my NB comedy this week. For those of you who might not know what an NB is, I am one. This is what an NB looks like. And I don't identify as male or female, as a man or a woman. So I'm somewhere in the middle. And life is very interesting from here. I have to say, as an, as an MD, I have a very strong aversion to gender reveals. And as all of my friends that didn't come down with COVID seem to come down with pregnant, there's been a lot of gender reveal on my social media. It's hard for me to imagine being willing to kill off my friends and family just to make absolutely certain that my friends and family know about my child's genitals. Perhaps you think I'm embellishing, but did you know, in 2021 alone, before the end of April, five people had been killed at gender reveal parties. Five. Statistically, you might have a greater chance of surviving a shark attack than a gender reveal party. <laughs> Wikipedia gives a list of all of the people ever killed or injured at gender reveal parties. A 34-year-old from Somerset, New Jersey broke his ankle at a gender reveal party kicking a football. 
56-year-old from Iowa was killed in October 2019 from debris from a gender reveal explosion. <laughs> One passenger was injured on a plane crash in Turkey, Texas, in November of 2019 as their low-flying crop duster was attempting to drop 350 gallons of colored water for a reveal. The pilot was not injured. A woman in Houston, Texas was struck in the foot by a dart at a gender reveal party. A man from Massachusetts was struck in the groin by a powder cannon, not a big deal apparently, during a gender reveal party in 2020. In February, a 26-year-old man from uh, Heartland Township, Michigan was killed by shrapnel when a small cannon exploded <laughs> during a nearby gender reveal party. He wasn't even in attendance. I could go on and on. There was even the El Dorado, fi El Dorado fire in uh, California, which burned 22,000 acres, was caused by a gender reveal. So I assure you, I'm not exaggerating. It's gotten to the point where even my friends have now have uh, friends who have no interest in participating in gender reveal parties get pressure from their friends and family to do the big genital reveal. So I did some brainstorming to come up with non-binary gender reveal ideas. Number one, gender reveal. You have a box. You lift the box, there's a glass of water. Congratulations, you're gender fluid. <laughs> you lift the box, and there's just a photograph of a bee visiting a lily. Lift the box. Rainbow laser beam light show and rainbow confetti. Yeah. <laughs> Lift the box, an anatomically neutral baby doll. Lift the drape, a drawing of a neutral stick figure. Okay, so gender reveal, right? You bring out the cake and the shape of a gear shift on neutral. Green confetti falls from the sky with the words they, them, and there. You remove a drape. It's a map of Switzerland. Because it's neutral. Gender reveal, lift a box, and you have a D20. Nerds love that joke. But the nerds aren't paying attention. Yes, I got it. <laughs> uh, gender reveal, go ahead and send out the invites while you're pregnant, but date the party for a decade from now. Ah, excellent. Oh, nice. Um, gender reveal. Have a magic themed party, and when it's time for the reveal to come out of the hat, it's empty. And just look at your guest shrug and say, well, I guess you'll have that. <laughs> Alternative ending. Work out with your magician some way to, of making you disappear when they reach into the hat. Worth every penny. Alternative hat trick. Magician pulls out a bunny. Checks. Obviously can't determine the gender and shrugs and puts the rabbit back. Uh, gender reveal, rather than a groundhog soul, when the groundhog comes out of the hole to watch to see if the groundhog detects its shadow. Advise your guests that if the groundhog does see a shadow, it means the child will identify with the gender they're assigned at birth, and that if it doesn't see the shadow, well, who, who knows? Gender reveal, lift the box, it's a magic eight ball. Lift the box, it's the Hogwarts sorting hat. Gender reveal, sit everyone in front of the screen for the big moment, which is really just a documentary on the noble platypus. Refuse to explain. <laughs> if you prefer, you may substitute the apostle. Uh, I offer you, today's genders are, today's genders are pink kitties or blue dump trucks, pink hippos, kind of cute, very pink, lots of ruffles, or a green onesie that explains ladies' man. Mm. Purple onesie with glitter, mommy shopping buddy, or a camouflage onesie with always on duty. A footy sleeper, these, these were made up from uh, shopping for kids' clothes, because you only have one or the other option. Uh, footy sleeper with hot pink and purple floor pattern, or adorable light blue stripes with the words little brother. Dolls, or action figures. Tutus, or capes and nerf guns. Doll houses and pink jeeps, all kinds of soft furry things. Pretend jewelry, makeup, and accessories, craft kits, making bracelets and beads, props for being a princess or wife, each with a message about placement in your life. Or, weapon replicas of every sort, tools for le learning every sport, toys for learning how to build, toys for games played in fields, drum kits just for making noise, a life assigned by choosing toys. Um, the next part's called, I should have known I was an NB when. 
I should have known I was an envy when pockets became my clothing style. I should have known I was an envy when I heard about gender reveal parties and figured it was a protein material. I actually realized I was an envy when my eldest started to transition to a non-binary identity and stole all my clothes. I should have known I was an envy when I came out as bi at 18 and felt that the term was really too narrow to be accurate. Uh, and yet everybody else claimed that I was just being indecisive. If they only knew. I should have known I was envy when I had a mammal tattooed on my skin so I wouldn't have to shave anymore. That still cracks me up. I do actually have a platypus on my head. On my head. I should have known I was envy when I was in a sorority and a fraternity. God, it's so hard to pick. I should have known I was envy when I started wearing toe shoes as dress shoes, so no one would compliment me on them. It did not work. It turns out that's the only thing people notice and it's every conversation I have in public. Here's one for old people like me. I should have known I was envy when I was fascinated by the Adams family and repulsed by the Brady Bunch. Marsha was hot though. Uh, remember, we didn't have this non-binary language. It was hard growing up non-binary in the 80s. When I was growing up, they were like, girl. And I was like, girl, okay, but Viking. Girl. Okay, but pirate. No, girl. Okay, but cowboy? You mean cowgirl. No, I mean cowboy. Girl, okay, but astronaut. Explorer, wrestler, just girl. Okay, but president. I mean, would it have been so bad? Now we bring you to envy problems. Envy problems. You know, like when you're so new to being correctly gendered that you don't know someone is talking about you and they use your correct pronouns? Being invalidated for falling into linguistic traps and accidentally misgendering yourself? Having to shop in at least four different clothing departments to piece together one decent outfit. Makeup tutorials that ignore the existence of stubble. When you hate your job, but not nearly as much as you hate your body, so you keep going to afford your transition. If you can find it in a version of your gender, it won't come in your size. If it comes in your size, it absolutely will not reflect your gender. There are perks too, though. I've always looked sideways at cis women who were willing to pay more for pink razors. Well, there are some hygiene products that there is no getting out of. The best way to let yourself out of the pink tax is to just buy blue. Ever look at someone and think maybe they're born with it? Maybe they're an envy? You know, it's hard being a thoroughly gender queer comedian. I've never said anything with a straight face. And that is the end of the envy segment. I'm gonna do one more joke real quick because it's such a crowd pleaser. It's the baseball joke. A man from Ireland goes back home and he's trying to explain the game of baseball to his dad and he says, Da, over in America they've got this great game where they did this big diamond on the ground and there's a bag in each of the four corners. Now, now, on the three far backs there's a guy standing on each back and one guy smack in the middle. Now this other guy gets his big stick and he walks up to the empty bag. The guy in the middle picks up a rock. They said it was a ball down, but I swear it was a rock. And he throws it at the guy with the stick. The guy with the stick gets it and sends it flying and everybody yells, run you bastard, run, and he runs to the next bag. The next guy gets his big stick and he walks up to the empty bag. The guy in the middle picks up a rock and he throws it. The guy gets it with the bat and sends it flying and everybody yells, run you bastard, run. And I'm thinking I can get into this game, dog. Now the next guy gets his stick, he walks up to the empty bag. The guy in the middle throws a rock, he hits it and sends it flying. So I yell too, dog. We all yell, run you bastard, run. He runs to the next bag. Now the next guy gets a stick. He walks up to the empty bag. The guy in the middle throws the rock four times down, and he never even moves. But the guy behind him tells him to go take his bag. So I stand up. I yell, run, your bastard, run. The guy next to me says, he can't, man, he's got four balls. I say, walk with pride, man. Walk with pride. <laughs> oh, walk with pride. <laughs> And this brings us toward the end of the program. Thank you so much, Jamie, for your creativity. I do want to say that gentleman right there was 
Brightheart, that's what his name was, and he, or uh, they, came from the NoCo LGB community, so were in the middle of your thing that I and thank you guys for laughing. That yeah. makes it a lot easier to do comedy. And it, I felt like it was true laughter, not like pushed. Well, I would take laughter with my dog. Totally made up. Um, acting. It was nice getting a little touch in, some people walking by and coming through. We should really utilize the child. They're super cute. We can have them out there, like, luring people in. Luring. Uh, so again, this is a great evening. What a great evening. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule, your busy lives, to little old us. Uh, uh, hopefully you've had a lovely evening. I know we have absolutely had an amazing evening, and um, it seems short every time. Oh, wonderful. I have two. Thank you so much. There's some pet CBD for you. Uh, so it looks like we are running out of time here, mm -hmm. and we're going to round it out with Goodbye, another song that uh, we wrote collaboratively. Uh, again, I'm Adam. I'm connecting with Adam. This is uh, Proteus, Jamie, the other half, the better half. Um, if you have liked what you've heard, come back next Monday, and then show up for our Wednesday and Thursday shows, too. Lots of ways to celebrate us and celebrate life and connect with us. We'd love to connect with you further. <clears throat> This song, also, yes. Order your love grams. It's so true. Order, order your love grams at gmail.com. It's order your love grams at gmail.com. That one is And if you don't, can't remember that, just reach out to us. Mm -hmm. We're here. We'd love to connect with you. Without further ado, I give you goodbye. Peace.